Right, in this video we're going to look at infographics and how it applies to National 5 graphic communication. Now an infographic is an information graphic. To you and I we know it as a, as a graph or a chart. And there are four that we need to concern ourselves with in graphics. We have to think about the pie chart, the bar graph, the line graph, and finally the table of data. And each of these styles of infographic have got different advantages and disadvantages, and we use them in different places. It's not always the case that each of these infographics is suitable for the job in hand. We have to carefully choose one, choose the one that we're going to use, based on what the graphics' strong points are. So let's take a look at them individually. The first one we're going to look at is the pie chart. Now the pie chart is great for showing the divisions of a whole number or the divisions of a complete thing. It's also great for showing fractions and percentages. But you have to be cautious, because if the segments in a pie chart get too small, then it becomes unreadable and ends up being a little bit ugly to look at. And also, the shape that you're choosing, you're better to keep that simple. Don't use an overcomplicated shape. You'll see some pie charts attempt to divide up really quite complex things. And because the primary use of an infographic is to present data, then you should keep your shape nice and simple. That would be my tip for you. The next one to look at is the bar chart. And the bar chart's great if you want to compare different figures. The bar chart presents a snapshot of data at a certain time. It's not particularly good at showing flow. All right, there are exceptions to that, but it's if you want to show numbers changing over time, the bar chart is maybe not the best one to use. And I would also caution you, like I did with the pie chart, don't use a bar chart if there are too many bars required, Okay, because it starts to become cluttered, and you might be better off choosing one of the other formats of infographic. The third thing we're going to look at is a line graph. Now, the line graph is superb for showing changes over time. And you look look at the examples on screen, for example. We can see here, we've got dates, we've got time ticking along the bottom, left to right. Same here as well, left to right, we've got the months marked. And we can see data changing over time. So, a line graph is great for allowing us to compare two different, uh, two different data series. And it's also great for showing us flow and changes over time. But you have to remember to present your data from left to right because that's the way, at least in most countries, that people read line graphs. And the fourth type of infographic that we need to look at is the table of data. Now these are quite these are often used when you've got lots and lots of precise data to compare. These are also used where your data uh, varies as well. Sometimes you can look at the example I've got here. We've got data which includes words, percentages, numbers, measurements and ticks. So it's quite a lot of, and prices at the bottom here. So there's quite a lot of data flavours in there. And as soon as you've got to compare lots of different types of data, then a table might be the best bet for you. Because it is great for comparisons, so you'll see these pop up in technical websites and in shopping websites. But it doesn't show changes over time, just like the bar chart, it shows a snapshot of data at a certain point in time. In terms of readability, these things can become quite confusing. They demand more reading than the other chart types. Okay, The other chart types you can kind of sometimes understand with just a glimpse of them. But a table of data needs to be read. So only use these as a last resort when you can't make another graph work. Let's talk about some top tips then, if you ever come round to making infographics. The best infographics are easy to read and understand. The best infographics have an element of graphic design about them. They've been designed Okay? And that means that they comply with the design principles that we've been learning about. Dominance, unity, depth, alignment, contrast, etc. You will find all of these design principles 
and well-made infographics. The best infographics also use colour theory. People choose the colours that are used in infographics based on what they know about warm colours, advancing towards us, cold colours receding, colours which catch your attention, colours which harmonise and go together, and colours which contrast. So there's always colour theory getting applied to infographics. Number four, infographics must be beautiful, they must be memorable. Number five, they must suit the subject matter. You'll notice, let's go back a few things just to, uh, so something like that. That graph there suits the subject matter. We've got flags to represent countries and we've got stems of spaghetti to represent the bars. Okay, so always go that extra mile to try and find some way to design your infographics that it suits the subject. And as a technical point, finally point six, the best infographics always have a title, so you know what you're looking at. They always have a legend, some sort of key, and they always have labels. The numbers, the bars, the axes, everything's labelled and explained. Your job is how you can get all those to be beautiful and memorable.